Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me Umber Rays and uh, hey, happy Halloween everyone, uh, especially all of you people on global, uh, global people, you guys are getting your new Halloween event, uh, which I gotta say, um, I, I, I gotta say that I absolutely find it like hilarious that uh, they're just putting a slot machine now in Brave Exvius. I mean, gotcha games, we all really know what they're like but i just gotta say it's really really on the nose to just see an actual slot machine in the game now so but uh hey it's probably fine or maybe it's not fine uh and uh so of course there are the two new units uh, i'm not really here to talk about them so much uh so much as just to say that um you know they they well one of them looks okay okay the other one not so much i gotta say i like uh, what is it? Carton's design? I'm, I'm, uh, Carton? Carton? Um, maybe it's accented like that. Anyway, Carton, Carton, Carton looks, uh, pretty nice. And, uh, I gotta say, Gadre is one of the, I don't really know if her kid is anything good or not, uh, I gotta say, though, that the unit design is just a little all over the place. Like, honestly, I have no idea what to think looking at the uh, kind of monk robes with the weird <coughs> evil eye gun with the pumpkin hat. I, I gotta say, someone accidentally must have fell through, like, a Goodwill section of, like, old Halloween clothes and um, that's what happened, I guess. I don't, honestly, I'm not here to say that these units are good or bad. Uh, just to say that uh, to global people, I hope you enjoy your Halloween event. Um, and obviously there are puns to be made about Grave Exvius and the JP side, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, today, I'm not going to be on the negative side so much more as just taking a look back at some things. Also, uh, in my previous video, I think some people took my recommendation of Chocobo Fina way too seriously. I don't give a shit if she's meta on the J on the global side. I don't give a shit if she's the worst unit on the global side. I kind of only recommended her just out of the fact that I like her and that, you know, not everything has to be meta. But uh, I love some of the people who just got really, really, like, angry at me in the comments and, uh, uh, like, that is hilarious to me when people are like, Oh, you're such an idiot, you don't know anything! And it's like, I, I don't care so much anymore. Uh, I mean, this is kind of just me warming up to videos again before uh, War of the Visions comes out and finishing off, like, Brave Exvius. So, there you go. <laughs> Have at it with what you will. And for the people who are annoyed that I'm, like, I logged in during the fourth anniversary, whatever. Uh... Tons of fun to be had on my end. Anyway, let's talk about what we're really here to talk about today. And that is about JP. Because now a year has come and gone since the last anniversary, basically, more or less. Give, give a little leeway here. But let's talk about looking forward to the fifth year of Brave Exvius. Which is what we are getting into. This is now starting the fifth year of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius on the JP side. And out of just a little bit of hilarity, I gotta say that I find it really funny that the fourth year essentially started with an OP unit on a horse and ended with an OP unit also on a horse. Uh, yeah, Odin Reagan is a, like this one of the summon units that came out during the fourth anniversary. Uh, the banner is currently up. He's pretty much, if you know, there's some debate, I think, as to who is the tippity top tierist OP unit, but uh, Reagan is definitely up in the top three. And I'll talk about that more later when I do a video just specifically about the fourth anniversary. But in the meantime, I kind of wanted to just look ahead to what is going to happen in the fifth year. Obviously, you know, getting into the fifth year of Brave Exvius, it's getting starting to get into the Twilight era, where we've gotten pretty much every unit in Final Fantasy history, or at least most of the main ones. And now 
If you look back at what was the fourth year, the fourth year had a couple of things in common. One, a lot of limited banners and a lot of limited units. Uh, I would not be think it would be a, any kind of a stretch to say that over 50% of the units, it, and this is without looking too hard at it, um, over 50% of the units that came out in JP over the last year were limited units in some format. Whether they are festival units or, you know, just, <coughs> excuse me, um, just, you know, some form of limited, you cannot get them at any time in the regular pool. A lot of units ended up in that category this year. There were also the, uh, the weapon, you know, the weapon trial bot or units, uh, like, was it Elneth who came out? Um... And he was the only one, and that was kind of dropped, and there were some collaborations. And getting into the fifth year, there will also be collaborations. But the fourth year was very much a lot of limited time stuff. And that is probably going to continue. It is also not a stretch to say that the fourth anniversary was nowhere near... Well, I guess it's still kind of ongoing. Is nowhere near as good as the third anniversary was. So, global people, we kind of have that to look forward to. Well, what could possibly come for the fifth year, this fifth year? Well, obviously, I think War of the Visions coming to the game is both a really good thing and a really, really bad thing. Uh, for one thing, it could split a lot of players' times between the two games. You know, people may not be as serious into Brave Exvius. Maybe this is the transitioning period from uh, Brave Exvius to War of Visions. Maybe that's going to happen. Probably not. Uh, just because I think that so long as Global is still doing Brave Exvius, there's enough money coming into the game that probably JP will be kept alive for posterity's sakes. Obviously, I don't think Square Enix or Alum wants their game to go under, so if they, even if the JP side isn't necessarily making the most money, and yes, I do know that probably Brave Exvius is somewhere on that list that comes out every month of how much money every game makes, but it's definitely not what it was in its heyday, and if a game or a project in a lot of businesses is not seeing growth, it's kind of considered not good, so there you go. Either way, War of the Visions coming out, I foresee, you know, the, a fair number of crossover events probably. With War of the Visions characters, they can easily just be thrown on a banner on the Brave Exvius and JP, and that's probably really easy, and, you know, that's not a negative thing. Nothing I feel that I've said so far is negative. Perhaps cynical in a certain extent, in the same way that, uh, you know, it is cynical to look at a business that wants to make money. Well, yeah, obviously, they will do what is cheap and easy sometimes, depending on their schedule, and that will determine what essentially gets made and what essentially doesn't get made. It's not unfair, I don't think. And with War of the Visions having already a fairly big new cast of characters, uh, you might as well just do that as your... You know, you might as well just do that as a series of character banners. But the other thing to talk about with JP is the fact that the um, CG protagonist series is coming to an end. There is um, not too much left by my tracking. We have CG Cloud, CG Squall, and CG Bam. Now, this is also barring the idea that there will be any more CG heroes in the future. And to be fair, I could see this happening. After, you know, these three characters, or, wait with me, let's say, you know, how many months left until Final Fantasy VII Remake? Well, we could have, we have, um, you know, it's, uh, we got November, December, uh, January, February, March. So five months, give or take, you know, with some, maybe a Christmas unit thrown in here or there. You know, we have Bam, we have Squall, we have Cloud. But we also could have Ramza too. That is one that I think people are forgetting in the list of possible protagonists who get ACG, and I would not be surprised. Ramza is very, very far and relegated from being 
any kind of useful on the JP side. So I and also Rams is in Dissidia. He has a CG model, so I would not be surprised if they ended up using that CG model and uh, just making a CG version of Ramza. I also think a lot of Final Fantasy Tactics people would be very happy with it. And it could potentially coincide with War of the Visions. Uh, War of the Visions is basically Final Fantasy Tactics. So why not release a CG character around the same time frame to get people excited kind of thing? Whatever. Anyway, the there's a big question mark right now of Advent Children. Uh, at the start of November, Advent Children is going to have an event on the JP side with a new version of Cloud, uh, which is based on his Advent Children model. For people who are kind of wondering if you haven't seen it, he's kind of using the Seven Sword, not the Buster Sword anymore, the Seven Sword, which is good. I prefer that. Uh, I know the Buster Sword's iconic, but I like the Advent Children thing. Anyway, we don't really know if it's a CG model or not yet. If it is CG Cloud, that puts uh, March, given those other CG characters, that would be about the time of FF7 Remake. And if there's already been a CG Cloud, how could they celebrate Final Fantasy VII Remake? It makes no sense, right? Well, I think the very, 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 very easy answer is to just do what I've said for a long time is going to happen. I think that the fifth year is going to start introducing the CG villains line. CG Sephiroth, CG Hexdeath. I mean, it's obviously something people would like. Uh, CG characters are popular. People do like them. People want to collect them. And uh, those character models do already exist thanks to Dissidia and T. Whether you like the game or not, um, those assets are available. Might as well use them. And that's kind of thing. A new, incredibly powerful version of those characters, I think, is very plausible. But I am not here to just do, you know, the easy predictions. Let's go one step further and talk about what could potentially be a step further. I think that we will see a, a improvement to the CG villains line in that they will start to have both CG limit bursts and one CG attack. I don't think that we're going to see the eight star or anything. If Alan was going to have announced the eight star, it probably would have been better to do it at the fourth anniversary. You know, positive or negative reactions regardless. I, I don't know if there's necessarily a good time to announce that. Other than that, I just don't overly see a too much. I maybe see a new mode or two getting added in the fifth year uh, for some kind of combat, um, but I don't really see new enemy types. I don't see new styles of units. I don't see any new mechanics in the game, such as double attack units or anything like that. I just don't think any of that is on the priority list. I think that it's probably just to so long as JP is not showing like an increase in users, I don't think that a ton of resources will be spent on the game anymore, per se. Um, I really think that uh, other than that, fests are going to continue to ad nauseum, ad nauseum, sorry. Um, I really wonder though, if we're going to see the inclusion of some more of the uh, weapon trial boss units like Elnath was and I'm probably getting the wrong one but anyway it was a cool idea and I wish that they had kind of done more with them but them not being fest units maybe they weren't powerful enough they didn't interest people enough the way the summon units seem to have interested people Either way, it's been a year of increased power creep and it will continue into the next year. Do I really see Bra Brave Exvius changing the formula a massive amount? Probably not. I think that uh, probably right now they've kind of balanced a little bit more to the making money versus giving out free stuff. You know, there's going to be moments where Brave Exvius is going to piss off the people who are still playing it and there are going to be moments where they make them incredibly happy such as collaborations, you know, with Full Metal Alchemist. 
Although I have to put in right now the most wild prediction I will make for next year. In the fifth year, there will be a collaboration with another Square Enix anime property. And that property is going to be Soul Eater. Yeah, the uh, anime. Soul Eater was actually really great. I absolutely love that anime. I thought it was great. Uh, some people don't like the ending so much, but I really loved it. So yeah, that's kind of a little bit of my theory as to what the fifth year is going to look like. Further than that, who knows? Who knows? Maybe these summon units such as Odin Reagan is a really clear indication that we're going to get, you know, multiple versions of other Final Fantasy characters, such as, um, well, just for example, Cloud. Cloud's popular. Imagine if we could have Ifrit Cloud, Shiva Cloud, Ramu Cloud, um, Hezekotl Cloud, Eden Cloud, Knights of the Round Cloud, Knights Round cloud, ooh, a Bahamut cloud. The uh, possibilities are endless. Sim Bahamut cloud. Sim Bahamut Sephiroth. Sim Ifrit Sephiroth. The possibilities are endless for this 30 year cycle. The question is, is when people will get kind of tired of paying for the same units just with a new hat. Uh, that is kind of the thing that is you know, so long as people are enjoying Brave Exvius, it'll continue. And with War of the Visions, uh, we'll see how that affects the player base, as well as how it just affects Brave Exvius. Obviously, having a parallel game running uh, could split resources, could split development time, could split a lot of things. Because even when War of the Visions is out, there's still going to be needed a fair amount of support for that game too and uh that eats up resources so i guess we'll have to wait and see as such as you do with anything in the future but uh the fourth the fifth year i mean as long as people are happy i'll keep going anyway i've droned on enough uh for that's all for now tell me what you think is going to happen in the fifth year of brave xvs other than the game, let's let's keep it positive this time. Uh, anything, ex you know, cynical, but a little positive, too, um, in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Oh, and of course, a happy Halloween to everyone.